And, of course, what a perfect cue for Lefty Lunas. He couldn't get any better. Uh, James and Rita, I was astonished. Uh, Christopher there was talking about the use of language, and you were discussing that, James, how the words are manipulated. Nancy Pelosi uh, tried to uh, get the uh, gender language changed in, in the U.S. Congress. She said, we're not going to use the words grandfather or father or mother anymore. And yet, within, within a few days, have a listen to what she was actually saying. I stand before you as a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a daughter, a daughter whose father proudly serves in this Congress. James. Well, I mean, look, that's just, uh, Rowan, I'm literally shaking right now. I'm so triggered <laughs> by her use of all of these words like wife and mother, when, of course, she should have said a person of marriage and a person exactly. of parenthood and, you know, all of the other sort of ridiculous things that we've spoken about on this show. It is so, you know, I mean... Guys, 1984 was written as a warning manual, not an instruction manual. <laughs> okay, well, while you're on a roll about gender, petromasculinity is the new thing, Rita, oh, apparently. James, yeah. tell us. You know, petromasculinity is, um, so this is, I hadn't heard this term until a Vancouver councilman uh, started talking about this the other day. He <laughs> saw a great big ute, a pickup truck, as they call them over in those parts, and it triggered him so much that he was literally shaken while he was literally shaking. He tweeted about how this was an example of something called petromasculinity. Well, I had a look. Apparently, petromasculinity is all the big rage on the left. There was a Journal of International Studies in 2018 where they actually wrote a whole story or a whole paper on fossil fuels and and petromasculinity. It has been uh, and the historic role of fossil fuels in uh, perpetuating white supremacy and all of this. Nah. And it's this thing called petromasculinity. So apparently if you like to drive a car and you want to keep driving your car, you are responsible for the Ku Klux Klan and climate change and everything now, else. Now, so, yeah. now, now, Rita, speaking of white supremacy, you've got a terrific story for us about what exactly following from what Christopher was saying, how everything is white supremacy if you want it to be. Oh, is this our Democrat councillor yes, exactly. friend who's yes. just decided <laughs> yeah. everything is white supremacy? Electoral college, pillar of white supremacy. Uh, filibusting, pillar of white supremacy. College debts, pillar of white supremacy. Of <laughs> Even though the majority of debt, college debt, is held by white people, um, it's, it's a pillar of white supremacy. So this is just a brilliant tactic from the hard left. You just label anything you don't like a pillar of white supremacy, and then anyone who argues against it, well, they're a white supremacist. <laughs> Argument this, uh, over. Exactly. This fella, I can't remember this bloke's name, but he's a Democrat uh, congressman, so he's the, you know, now in the government. And you're right, Rita, he, as an official, you know, government uh, representative is out there, <laughs> Labelling here he is, this bloke, um, Jamal Bowman. That's him. We finally Bowman. got That's his him. picture up. Yeah, we Jamal got him Bowman. there, and then we'll show you his tweet <laughs> as well. Where every single there you go, every single thing is electoral white college, supremacy. pillar of white supremacy, <laughs> student loan debt, pillar uh, of white supremacy. God, as, as James says, it's going to be a long four years. <laughs> um, now I was the lunatics was, are running the asylum. Oh, they certainly are, Rita. Um, particularly in London, where. Uh, Sadiq Khan, who's the uh, mayor there, the left, hardcore lefty mayor, woke mayor of London, he's used the co coronavirus. Uh, Paul Murray has a great line about under the undercover of COVID. He's used uh, the coronavirus to block off whole areas of uh, London, install bollards and uh, turn them into bike lanes. But the fascinating thing, and James, I think it's happening in your part of Sydney as well, but the fascinating thing is the residents of these uh, uh, London uh, suburbs took him to court, went to the higher oh, court. And the high beautiful. court. The high court said it is illegal. They found what Sadiq, uh, Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, is doing is illegal. And the London suburbs have gone to war uh, against this. James, similar things happening in Sydney. Well, yeah, we've seen, uh, as, as, and again, as Paul Murray says, under cover of COVID, uh, we have seen all of these pop-up bike lanes appear, not just in the city of Sydney, but other councils around Sydney. And they've caused, as all sorts of people have pointed out, all sorts of problems. You know, a lot of them are unsafe for bicyclists. And I've talked to cyclists who say they actually don't like the way these things are organized, but also they add traffic congestion problems. Um, and they're, they, they, they just wind up taking up all sorts of room. And, and they are now, you know, have gone from saying, oh, 
Oh, they're just pop-ups, you know, to that now saying they are going to be a permanent feature. So, you know, the new normal is going to be all of these bike lanes all over the place, which have been slipped in under the cover of COVID. Frankly, I wish some of the councils around uh, where I live had the courage to stand up to these sorts of plans rather than 